Hi everyone, this is Elena of The Witch's Box, and I'm here today with another episode of Witch Book 2. And today I'm going to be talking about a book called The Witch's Book of Self-Care by Erin Murphy Hiscock. I'm sure you've seen this book make the rounds. It's beautifully designed. I really am loving these foil covered graphics on books nowadays. A lot of the witchcraft books have this cover and although I feel like it's probably in danger of being overdone, I still really, really love it. And this book has got this blue background with this pink foiling, but then if you go on the inside, right, you've got pink, the text is blue, this is kind of like a dark fuchsia pink. I just really loved the design and the look throughout. This is the back. This is the spine, like this, yeah. So let me read to you really quickly about the author. Erin Murphy Hiscock, currently a resident of Montreal, Canada. Erin works as a freelance writer and editor. She's the author of Power Spellcraft for Life, The Art of Crafting and Casting for Positive Change. There's more. A Solitary Wicca for Life, A Complete Guide to Mastering the Craft on Your Own, comma. There's a long list of books, but I'm going to read them off because I feel like these might be books that you all might be interested in. So to continue, The Way of the Green Witch, which is also popular and I'm sure some of you have seen out there. The Way of the Hedge Witch is a book that I actually have on my to be read list. And Pagan Pregnancy, The Journey from Maiden to Mother. And that is yet to be released. She is also the editor of an anthology called Out of the Broom Closet. Erin is a third degree Wiccan high priestess in the Black Forest clan, a tradition linked both by lineage and, ex and practice to several other branches of Wiccan thought and philosophy, including Caledoni tradition, Druidism, Gardnerian practice, I can never say this correctly, but Sax Wicca, spelled S-E-A-X Wicca, general Celtic Wicca and German witchcraft. She works as a priestess in her community performing rites of passage and giving occasional workshops and leads a private coven. Her hobbies include playing the cello, hand spinning, and weaving. That's her bio. I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't know if this is true or not, but if she does have any social media, I will link to that below. And now let's get to the book. It's really pretty. I really, I love touching it. I enjoyed this book because she goes into a myriad of different types of self-care through the lens of witchcraft, which I thought was lovely. And I want to read to you what the table of contents offers so that you have an idea of what topic she covers under self-care. So self-care and magic, she talks about that. That's part of the introduction. She'll go into mental and emotional self-care, physical self-care, spiritual self-care, and household self-care. And there are quite a few, a moderate amount of books in the bibliography that you can also go to for references. The conversation around self-care is really big right now, and it's been like this, I think, maybe for the last four years, five years, partly because we are a pretty worn out and downtrodden society. We just have way too much going on. There's a lot of noise. Social media has not contributed well to our personal mental health in a lot of ways. There's just a lot going on and so as a result of that people who are sensing their draining, their unrest, their dis-ease, we're just worn out. The stress, the topic of self-care comes up and typically on social media there tends to be this very glib hey, get a pedicure, or go get a massage, or go get a facial. And not only is that sometimes cost prohibitive for people, but it's not really a deep down to the core type of self-care, right? It's fun, it can be really indulgent, it can certainly feel good. Massage can certainly be part of a very valid self-care health routine. I used to be a massage therapist, so I have a lot of opinions about that. But there's more to self-care than that. And she touches on a lot of things, which I thought was fantastic. She'll touch on things like setting boundaries, how to say no and how to say yes, who to spend time with, who not to spend time with, right? Exercise, what foods to eat, what foods not to eat. She'll, uh, she offers quite a few recipes on comfort food that are not necessarily calorie focused, but more about eating foods that are pleasurable and that feel comforting to you. She shares, you know, there are spells to deal with certain certain feelings of stress or depression or unrest, boundaries, spells around boundaries, things like resting your eyes, nutrition. There's so, so, so much in here. The benefits of tea and different teas to have, 
to help de-stress and relax. Recipes for bath scrubs and bath bombs and things that can help create a much more luxurious and indulgent and self-nourishing experience while you bathe. I mean, really lovely. There's a lot of information here in terms of recipes and rituals and spells. In that sense, it can seem super overwhelming, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But she talks about naps, spiritual self-care. She goes into things like working with deities, working with animals, discovering your spiritual beliefs, so vision boards and different journaling exercises and things that kind of help reconnect you within and slow you down. Presence gosh there's so so much a whole slew of different sections on different types of meditation and why that can be helpful for you as a self-care tool a lot there is a lot in here so i like that i like that there are a lot of options a lot of examples of different ways that you can care for yourself i think that for someone who is in really big need of self-care reading a book that is so chock full of stuff can feel really overwhelming because the information is good and the information is super helpful and it gives you a i mean a really broad range of different things that you can adopt for yourself i think it's important to know that you don't have to adopt them all it would not be possible to do all of these things right so i think that that would be the caveat that I would give to all of you as you go in, if you're feeling like you're at a place in your life where you desperately need to switch things up and really crank up the amount of self-care that you are giving to yourself and you want something to guide you, before you dive into this book, know that you don't have to do all of these things at once. You don't even have to do a quarter of them. If you pick one, if you picked two, that can almost be enough for any one of us to begin to turn inward and tend to ourselves in a really conscientious and present way. So that would be the only caveat. If you're feeling like a certain type of way, like right now your life is super stressed out and then you pick up this book, you're gonna be like, holy cow, this is a lot. So you don't have to do it all. The other thing about this book is that yes, there are a lot of resources and a lot of different things that you can do. And it's fairly easy reading, it's just a little dry. So it started to feel at some point where I was just one thing after the other, after the other, after the other. There, there I don't know, I didn't feel like there was enough meat between each of the different rituals or recipes or suggestions on different things that you can do. It wasn't hard reading, it just, it felt a little dry. I gave this book a three star rating. It's good, it's solid. I would totally recommend it if you want resources for self-care. I wouldn't say it was life-changing, but it's a good resource. Yeah, like that. And I'm definitely, I've definitely got a couple of her other books on my to-be-read list because I've heard really good things about her and the books that she's written. So there it is. The Witch's Book of Self-Care, Magical Ways to Pamper, Soothe, and Care for Your Body and Spirit by Erin Murphy Hiscock. And uh, yeah, if you've read it, this book has been making the rounds. So if you've read it, if you have any opinions on it, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about what, if any, of the recipes or rituals or tasks or exercises that she offers have you done? Have they worked for you? There are a couple of things in here that I already do. My list of things that I do for self-care I think is kind of topped off, but it needs to be recalibrated, right? So there are things in there that don't really serve me as much as they used to, and I need to kind of change them out. It could be a really interesting conversation about, like, what is it that you do do for self-care? And maybe every six months or every year, we all need to kind of take a step back and say, these are the things that I do to take care of myself, but are they still serving me? And are there other things that I can do right now for where I'm at today that might serve me more and trade those things out? That'd be an interesting conversation to have at a different time or even in the comment section below. That's it. The Witch's Book of Self-Care. I recommend it. Just know that it can be a little overwhelming and that you don't have to do all the things in the book. And I want to hear what you thought about it. So please make sure to subscribe, click the bell below so that you can get a little notification when a new video comes up. And as always, I love hearing from all of you and please comment below because I like chatting. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next week with another episode of Witch Book 2.